Mailbag time, we've got a bunch of stuff here. I'll probably break this up into a couple of videos because I've got some more things coming, which might arrive today, I'm not sure. But we'll see what we get through today. First thing here, I've already opened it up a little bit because I needed something out of it. I'll show you this. I've got a couple of these things. Cable, not too exciting. But this thing here, it's a isolation transformer for audio systems. So if you're getting a ground loop issue on your equipment, you can plug this in series with it and it adds isolation because it's got a transformer inside there, like 600 ohms each side or whatever it is. I'm not sure what exactly what it is, but in fact we could probably measure it. The idea is it prevents ground loops because it actually disconnects the ground connection between equipment so you don't get a ground loop issue with harm and things like that. So I've had this issue with my system for a while on my computer where speakers would hum slightly. I thought, well, I'll just fix it because, you know, I can. It's just a ground loop issue. So I've got different types. I've got one of these, I've already put one of these on my computer, so I know that works, it actually works quite well. And also got these types, which obviously for wiring into equipment or into a little project box or something, a very similar sort of setup. Obviously these are stereo ones, so it's those two transformers. So it's basically two transformers, as you can see there. It's basically the same thing, got some capacitors on there as well to help quieten it down a bit more too, I guess. But yes, yeah, stereo. And this one's obviously meant for going to a project box or inside a piece of equipment. And it's basically the equivalent of what this is. They basically do the same thing. So let's do some measurements, see what resistance is across these inductors. So obviously we're doing DC resistance in this case, which is a bit different. If it's AC signals, which you're talking about with audio, you're going to be getting some different effects from that. It's inductance, not just resistance. So let's measure this one first. 123 ohms. T45. 122, so 122, 122. Okay, so a common ground on here, which has then got the isolation across there. Okay, so that explains that. So I should get isolation between each side. Doesn't matter what terminal I go to. There's nothing there. All right, so there's the isolation. So it passes through. Let's check this one out. So tip ring sleeve sort of set up. So this one's 75 ohms. Interesting. This is 75 ohms and this is 122 ohms. Which is the better one to use for this kind of thing, I don't know. I mean this is plug in. I'm sure, but what's the inductance of these things supposed to be? On these AC audio type jack things for headphone outputs. I know 600's for microphones. Is it K's? I thought it would be like a couple of K or something. Anyway, doesn't matter. I, I've got this plugged into my computer with one of these, exactly the same as this. That's working absolutely fine, it did the trick, so it doesn't seem to have had any negative effects, which is the important thing. And I've got this in mind for something else. I've got two of each. You always need a spare. And I've also got this switch, which I thought I might be using. Plastic switch. Turns out now I'm not going to be using that because I actually identified the switching correctly. So the switch I actually need is different to this, and I'm not even sure I can even get that same style of switch because it's very unique. So I don't know. Anyway, I'll use this eventually, so it's not a problem, but yeah. I'll give the links down below for things I can give the links for, so check those out. Terminals. What did I get these for? There's a particular job I was going to use these for. Well, the intention was actually for things like this, where you've got these binding posts, and you shove them in the binding post. These actually allow for two different sizes, because they're stepped down. I don't know if you can see that there. And the smaller size goes around the blinding post perfectly. And then you can tighten it down. This kind of thing. All right. I got these for my home theatre amp, which I recently upgraded. Because the wires are basically going through the little holes that they have in the binding post like that. And it's not great. I'd rather put some connectors on and actually have them on connectors. So this is just for speakers. These look like they're zinc plated steel. That looks like zinc to me, so these aren't copper, I'm pretty sure they're not copper. They just look the wrong colour, so yeah. Anyway, it's just for speakers, so it doesn't actually matter. As long as they conduct, that's what matters. Uh, what? The hell is this? <laughs> I didn't order these. <laughs> 
Okay. I definitely didn't order these. <laughs> Are you opening Kieran's mail? No. I don't think so. <laughs> Got my name on it. So, it's typically my nail, but I didn't buy these. That's weird. <sighs> yeah. Right. <laughs> Probably something I did actually buy this time. I'm going to have to look into this, find out what's the with that. That's just weird. Yeah. You can blame Johnny Fix for this. Johnny was using something like this to trim down something on something he was repairing. Cumber was cutting, but I realised I don't actually have any shears on cuts tin plate with. And there's been a couple of times I wished I had them, so now I've got some. Thanks, Johnny. It's all your fault. Now, as a wise man once said, you always need a spare. Oh, wait, that was me. Um, yeah, thanks, Johnny. <laughs> You've got two of them. I've got two different ones. Oh, for God's sake. They're different. Marginally. Oh, my one for in here, one for in the garage. You always need a spare. If you realise we don't need a golf cart to go from here to the garage, right? It's like literally five steps away. You are outrageous, sir. Thanks, Johnny. So I was looking at test leads. And I came across these. I thought these look interesting. And these are four wire. That's why they've got the double terminals on them. Four wire probes. See that? So you've got this dual together so when you push this down and makes contact with both of them you get a four wire connection using both probes and I thought that looked really good and it's a nice compact cable you know these big clips everywhere stuff like that and it's just you know obviously it's got this piece here gives you a bit of flexibility so if you probe yourself you can do it quite big things apart I suppose this part made you think it's a bit sort of DIY, having these glands on the end, it may be DIY, I really don't know. Maybe got some other sort of situation they've adapted, I don't know, but um, they look alright. PVC leads, unfortunately, not not silicon. It's a fairly decent sized lead on it. Let's try it out. Alright, let's stick these on here. This is a 1 ohm resistor. And I was doing testing, I was going to just touch the centers only about pushing them down. Nope, nothing. Push that one down. Nothing, push both of them down. Now I'm reading it. So, yeah, it's definitely doing a four wire measurement. And I'm getting one ohm. That's working beautifully. I've got measurement there of 0.99988 ohms marked on it. And it does have this variation going on there. But it could be interference affecting things. My, I do have a lot of interference in this room. RF and stuff like that is going on. So, I do expect to see things being problematic for doing low levels. But it's measuring okay. I'll turn the auto zero off. They can make a difference sometimes. You can see it jumping around a lot more. See that? It's probably just interference affecting these readings. But it's not bad. I don't know if these are twisted pair inside this cable or not. It probably isn't a twisted pair inside the cable. Like the reds might be twisted together, maybe? Dunno, it's hard to say. Yeah, well, no, for sure, is to cut one open and find out. I'm not going to destroy this to find out. So it's definitely doing a four wire measurement based on the probes anyway. I've tried us doing just the outers only. If I just do the outer, whilst pushing down the other one, nothing. It's definitely doing four wire at the tips. Got no doubt about that. So now I've changed these other clip leads. These are some other ones I've got here. Four wire. Let's put these on, see if we sort of readings we get from these ones instead. Interestingly, it's a very different reading. 
turn the auto zero back on again. No. So just between these two different sets of leads, you're getting some very different readings, which is interesting. If I just do half the wally, yeah, that's definitely doing four wire on this as well. Yeah, definitely doing four wire nodes as well. So that's interesting the way it's very different between the two sets of leads. It shouldn't be different at all. Not really. One more test. These are some Pomona leads. Got this from Pomona. So these should be good quality. Just stick these ones on the same points. Interesting, these are more like the probes instead. So these are basically matching what the probe is doing. Now I'll turn it back off again. One ohm. So which one do you trust? I've got this one and the hand probes which basically match. This is actually probably slightly better actually. It's been one of the ones these are looking slightly more accurate. And the other little clip leads which I've got, which I think I've got from AliExpress. So it makes me a bit more suspicious about those ones. But the Pomona ones I'll trust because they're Pomona ones and they look pretty good. Um, so I think the fact that the probes and the clip leads from Pomona are very similar, I'm a bit more comfortable about that. But the, um, yeah, the other clip lead which I had tried before looks good. So I'm suspecting this difference between these different probes is to do with the thermal effects between dissimilar metals. Obviously when you get different metals which come together you can get a thermocouple effect which is known as the Seebeck effect. And is that I don't know what some of these materials actually are in these probes, they're probably going to be dissimilar metals going on there. Obviously got copper terminals on the front of this, copper plugs on here, copper plugs on these clip leads, these are the Promona ones, these are decent quality. So, and proper copper cables. So the similar metals isn't going to be an issue apart from the connections themselves onto the actual unit maybe, onto the resistor. But these cables, who knows what they are? That is not copper. These are gold plated. So again, we've got dissimilar metals going on here, so it could be this is causing a slight shift because of the thermocouple effects. So, um, and the other one with the other clip that I've got, which is very different again, miles off. Um, that's probably creating a thermocouple effect which is throwing this out. So that's probably why those ones read much lower because they've got much more dissimilar metals. Whereas these are probably close to the correct because of the gold plate and stuff as well. I think I can trust them, but the other clip that I've got I can't trust because that seems to be a long way out. And to show you why I'm using four wire measurement, if I do two wire, I've got it set to two wire now, I'm using the same clip leads from Pomona, just do relative to zero that out. Stick this on the other terminal, exactly what it was before. This is with two wire measurement. Very different. Full wire should be more accurate. This is practically open by the time it's got here, look. Barely to buy postage, this one. So you mount this on your bench or on a shelf or whatever it may be, and you can use this to mount other things to it and move them around. I've got this in the intention of using it with my new extractor system. So I've got a proper air extractor system there. Showed that in the last mail bag. And I was thinking I could use some flexible hose on it and make it more versatile and just have some rigid hose coming up, convert to flexible hose and then have a flexible hose coming to this thing so I can move it around and position it where I need it. And the problem is I got a flexible hose, that was fine, I could make it fit, but it was noisy. The solid plastic hose which I've got here, which I'll show you in a second, that was quieter and noise matters to me because I'm obviously doing video recording and so because of the noise that the flexible hose is making, because obviously it's the air going across all the rough surface inside where it's all constantined up and stuff, that is problematic. I couldn't use it for that because it, it'd just be too noisy. I wouldn't be able to record video with it. My plan was to use this with a flexible hose so I can move the thing down and move the air inlet like this thing anywhere I want it, that was not practical because it's just too noisy, which is a real shame. It also came with this ring attachment here, interestingly. So if you wanted to, you could attach a microscope to it, maybe, I don't know, but <laughs> standard metal bracket, this bit of bent steel, nothing particularly exciting there, not particularly strong, but it should be good enough. Yeah, so, I mean, I've already got something like this over here for my magnifier. And the plan was to just basically have a second one and use that for the ducting for this. 
that. I managed to get it to reach just with the rigid tubing. And what I had to do in order to make it movable, because it was just so stiff before, is I lubricated all the joints with some silicon. So all the silicon is helping it to move around. Before it was just so rigid I couldn't really move it very easily. And now it's much more practical. So I can actually make do with a rigid one instead. So I had to you know, work around it. But I did like the idea of having a flexible hose. Anyway, I'll use it for something else. Maybe one of my video cameras up here. Use it for that. This camera, I think, is too heavy for it. But my little webcams I use when I'm doing live streaming, maybe I could put one of those on here and have it so I can put it around easier. Right now I've got these articulated arms which are only quite short. So maybe I could use this for it instead and give you more options for how to position the camera. That's a possibility. So it's not going to be wasted. I'll use it for something. It just, unfortunately, I can't use it for the thing I originally purchased it for because it turned out to be impractical which is a shame subscribe over there if you're already subscribed other videos to watch down there share the video if you think people might be interested in certain things there'll be links down below for all these things as i said before and johnny's a bad influence <clears throat> get you later